welcome to the another episode of Fungi Finders. Today we have a holiday special episode for you and we'll also be talking about, or especially about uh, winter mushrooms that you can find out on your hikes or walks if you go out into the nature. Anytime between uh, maybe October, November, all the way through the February and March, those will be the winter months that are usually not thought of being very fruitful with the mushrooms, but you might be surprised how many mushrooms you would find in the New England in the winter months. So welcome again, and let's talk about the mushrooms that keep on growing in the winter. If you go out in the winter, you will be very maybe surprised that you can still discover many edible, non-edible, and other types of mushrooms in the woods. Mushrooms will grow in the winter months. Uh, you will see a sprout of them kind of in the nature when the temperatures go above the freezing, obviously, and that's the time when the mushroom will sprout more. Uh, but uh, in the winter months, I would recommend if you're looking for mushrooms, try to look for them mainly on the decomposing wood, either standing trees that are still alive and growing, or the ones that are falling down on the ground, uh, if you see them anywhere on your walks. Mushrooms uh, in the winter mainly grow on the fallen trees or the growing trees, and they basically decompose whatever organic matter there is. They might sometimes grow even on the leaves, but definitely on the trees, and they're part of the subtropic uh, group of mushrooms, which means that they're decomposing the, uh, any organic matter. They're not the killers, as some of the people call them, or even mycologists. So their main uh, role during the winter is to decompose anything that's around in the nature. Mushrooms in the winter can also grow in the soil or out of the soil. Sometimes they actually sprout through the snow because the snow bank kind of forms a little warmer biome and the temperature of the soil gets a little bit higher under the snow. And then some certain mushrooms uh, that grow directly out of the soil uh, will pop up through the snow banks and you can sometimes see them. I personally found some wonderful hedgehogs in the winter time that were peeking through the snow. You can also see other mushrooms like in our picture that I have taken a couple of years ago. Um, uh, some edible species that you might discover we'll talk about today are oysters, also a um, mushroom called witch's butter, which is the common name. We have an amber jelly roll, which is a very interesting mushrooms. But there are also some lookalikes to them, and we'll also talk about those. Here is a very famous and very sought after wild mushroom called oyster or oysters. There's many different types of oysters that you can see. The ones that you see usually in the grocery store are grown commercially and they're very easy to grow due to the fact that they're decomposers, as I said. So they will grow on any decomposing organic matter. The ones that are grown in uh, big, uh, huge uh, facilities uh, usually grow on a sawdust or straw. Uh, but in the nature, the ones that you find will be much more tasteful. Their taste is much better than those of found in the grocery stores. Uh, oysters grow only on the hardwood trees and you can see many types of them. They might change a color with the temperature that's outside. They will get darker as um, the temperature gets lower, colder. You can see the oysters that are kind of on a white scale. They're coloring the caps, the tops. Uh, there's a special late fall oyster that you see on the right side called Panula serotonus. Um, the newest scientific name might be something else. Uh, but these late fall or winter oysters will grow in the winter months or the late fall months, as I talked about. And their color of the cap, if you can see on the picture, is kind of a greenish, palish, uh, I would say a hunter green color. Um, those are very, very delicious. They're very dense if you find them, if you want to cook with them. They grow in big clusters on the uh, hardwood trees, as I said. They have always gills on the underside, as you can see in the pictures as well. Uh, they grow in big clusters. And uh, the late fall oyster, which is a green color, one of the ID features that you might spot on this mushroom is that the mushroom does not have an actual stem or stipe. It's directly attached to the tree, and you will find a little knob on the underside 
of the mushroom, the gills, the little knob. Also, uh, one of the other um, kind of ID features that you should look for for this mushroom, or if you see something similar to this on the tree, is the smell. Uh, most people can tell that the smell of these mushrooms when they're fresh on the tree is kind of uh, kind of sweet, like a star anise or maybe licorice that you may know from uh, cookies or something like that. Um, oysters are very meaty, very delicious. The green foil oyster should be cooked uh, very well. Some people prefer to kind of boil it in a, a hot water. It will change the color with the cooking from a greenish to the golden yellow color. And then when you cook it for a little while, then you can toss it into other dish. Uh, it's delicious as a vegetarian stew, or if you like beef stroganoff, you could use oysters for that. Uh, funny story about the oysters, or funny kind of a thing that's been going around that you might have heard is how the oysters attract certain types of bugs or insects to them, and they kind of uh, consume them as they grow. Um, in the winter, you don't have to worry about that many bugs because in the winter, there is no bugs outside usually. So if you find any oysters in the winter, they'll be probably very, very clean and very nice. And sometimes the oysters in the winter or other mushrooms can actually freeze and then uh, overnight when the temperature drops and later in the morning or when the temperatures go up, they kind of start growing again. So I think they can stay preserved for a little bit longer. So if you're in luck and you see them on some fallen down trees, um, definitely collect them. And if you are not sure what you have, obviously, you should contact us, uh, ICAM or uh, SX48, which is me, and then we will uh, help you ID these mushrooms. So if you are in the woods and you think that you are finding uh, oyster mushrooms, but they don't look similar to the ones that you see in the books, uh, you see the underside that has gills on it, but the coloring is um, kind of an orange uh, apricot color. And uh, if you find this mushroom, it's orange, it has the gills. And if you look very closely at this mushroom, uh, it would have a tiny fuzzy hair on the top. Uh, this mushroom would not be considered a real oyster. The common name for this mushroom is called mock oyster because it's not really an edible mushroom. And uh, one other ID feature or ID thing that you might notice about this mushroom is that lots of people report that this mushroom smells really bad. It has a skunk-like odor, although to me, this mushroom doesn't smell bad at all. So that really depends on who finds this mushroom. Uh, I know lots of people, or I would say the great majority of people don't like to consume this mushroom. It's not considered edible. Uh, I'm not sure why there is. Um, if the taste is bad, uh, it's definitely not uh, toxic or poisonous. It's just something that people usually don't consume. Uh, mock oyster, uh, Phyllotopsis nidolans, which is the scientific name, is also much smaller than the regular oyster, uh, which is kind of quite meaty and big. And these oysters also grow out of the wood, like the edible oysters, but the clusters that they form are not as big as the regular oysters. I would say stay away from these. They're very pretty. The color is very beautiful, and sometimes you can find the whole patches of them covering old logs. And uh, as I said, to, to me, these mushrooms don't uh, smell bad, but uh, to some of you, they might. Uh, as you can see here, I took this picture a couple of years ago and everywhere around there's a snow and these mushrooms were just growing on the log. So look out for these in the woods. Uh, one of the very, very sought after wild edible mushrooms that you can find during these months when it's colder outside is called inaki or velvet foot, which is a scientific, uh, sorry, a common name uh, for a mushroom that lots of people are looking for. Uh, it's also called or goes by its scientific name, Flamelina volutupis. And this is a mushroom that is widely used in uh, Asian dishes. Um, we have two varieties here in a picture because the wild variety of inaki, as you can see, on the left side looks uh, very much different from the one that humans are cultivating uh, for, um, for the cooking or culinary purposes. So on the left side, we see the wild variety of inaki that grows on the trees. You can see the underside of the mushroom has a gills. Uh, the gills are not attached to the stem. 
The stem is very velvety. That what the name velvet foot comes from. And the cap of this mushroom will be very slimy and shiny, kind of a brownish color. Uh, mushrooms grow on the trees, as I said, and they can grow, uh, they always grow in a big clusters. So you have mushrooms that are always attached together and they're growing on the tree. Uh, you can compare it to the cultivated variety of inoki that looks completely different. If you would find this mushroom in the woods, you would not think it's the velvet foot or inoki mushroom. I wouldn't think that. Uh, it took me a while to re realize that that's what the cultivated variety looks like. As you can see, they're very tall, uh, the ones that are cultivated by uh, people and you can find them in a grocery store. Usually they sell them uh, in the Asian markets. You can find them in the little bags. Um, they're very tall, as I said, they have a very skinny and slender stipe or stem. Their caps are tiny compared to the wild, uh, wild variety. And uh, also, if you see these mushrooms in the store in the litter bags and you want to buy them, I would look for something that uh, has a pure white color. Once you see a little bit of brown on these mushrooms in the store, that means they're probably getting old and they're not as tasty as you would want them. And based on uh, my experience and experience of lots of other people that found uh, the wild anarchy in the woods, I highly recommend the wild variety uh, compared to the store-bought. The store-bought does not have as much delicious flavor as the wild variety, which goes for lots of mushrooms. Lots of mushrooms, if you find them in the wild, taste much better than if you find them in the store. Um, this is a great little mushroom and uh, I think uh, I think uh, I would highly recommend for you to look for these in the woods when you go out during the winter months. I am showing you another mushroom because of the wild inoki that I was showing you just now. Uh, here is one that sometimes people confuse the inoki with. It's called uh, Galerina marginata, which is the scientific name. and. Uh, Common name is called deadly galerina because it's deadly poisonous toxic mushroom. So uh, that's why when you are eating any mushrooms in the woods and you're not sure what you have, I would recommend finding a professional uh, from the Boston Mycological Club or someone like me who knows mushrooms. If you're not sure what you have, uh, stay away from it, don't consume it, don't feed anyone these mushrooms. But here you can see how the deadly galerina also grows out of the wood, the king wood, the king trees. It does also grow in clusters, as you can see, just like the inoki, the previous wild edible mushroom. It also has the gills on the underside. Uh, it can be anywhere from kind of a brownish hue that you can see on one of the pictures. Uh, some galerinas will be kind of yellowish, so they can have a variety of colors, but for some people they can look very similar to the first mushroom that was inoki. Galerina is not going to be uh, slimy on the top. Uh, it does have gills, but those gills are a little bit differently spaced. You can also see how the Galerina has uh, gills on the underside. They are coming also from the outside edge of the cap, not just from the inside. You can also see a ring on this mushroom, and Galerina has a dark colored spore. Uh, one of my favorite winter mushrooms to find with the kids, as you can see here in a picture, or without the kids, just by myself or oh, anyone, to show this mushroom to anyone is a lot of fun. It's called uh, Witch's Butter, and you can spot it from far away, always growing on the logs or the trees, and it's one of the jelly fungi group of mushrooms. Uh, you can see quite big patches of these on the trees in the winter, if there's not enough moisture, if it gets really dry and cold, the witch's butter mushroom, the jelly fungus, will actually kind of shrivel up. And uh, then if the snow comes or if the rain comes, it reconstitutes. So it uh, soaks up all the water uh, from the environment. I read recently that the witch's butter has a capability of holding up to 400 times its weight uh, in the water. And um, that might be the reason why uh, lately I have been discovering lots of cosmetic products and uh, those cosmetic products, some of them, have the addition of the witch's butter. 
Um, so that's probably uh, dehydrated and grind it up and, into the powder and add it to the face creams and lotions and stuff as a moisturizer. Um, Tremella Mesentrica is very beautiful. It is edible. Some people will collect these uh, in the woods and then they bring them home. Uh, they cook them in some kind of a juice, dehydrate them, roll them in a the sugar and dehydrate them again. And then they make kind of a candy from them. Uh, it's like a gummy bears. Uh, me personally, I think it's too much work. The witch's butter, you have to find a lot of it and it's very, very fragile. So if you go into the woods, I recommend aside from your basket, you should maybe carry a little Ziploc container uh, bring it with you and if you find the witch's butter and you want to take it home uh, Put it in the little Ziploc container because it usually doesn't survive the right in a mushroom basket I think that would be very hard for this mushroom. We found the whole patches this past winter uh, winter before that and uh, As you can see you can spot it from really far away and it's fun uh, It's very very jelly like as I said very kind of cold when you touch it to your touch and kids love to look at that and play with it. And here's our son that found a whole bunch of the witch's butter in uh, the local woods. I think this was picture, this picture was taken uh, on the Tobacco Woods Trail. Another mushroom that you might spot in the woods, and it's also the group, uh, another member of the family of the jelly-like mushroom is called Amber Jelly Roll. Uh, it resembles uh, witch's butter in lots of ways. As you see, the consistency is very jelly-like. Uh, it's brown in color. And this one tends to really grow on, usually on uh, sticks that you just find on the ground in the woods, on the fallen branches and the sticks. Uh, in the dry times, again, it will completely dry up and it looks just like old leaves sticking to the stick. But if you find this one on the stick, take it home, break off a piece of stick, take it home, and you can put it in a cup of the water and if you come back in a few hours the mushroom will absorb lots of water and uh, when you take out the stick it's going to be kind of fresh so this happens a lot of times if you go into the woods if you see these sticks and if you go out after the rain you would see that this mushroom kind of reconstitutes and keeps growing on right you can see the texture of it I am not sure if the amber jelly roll is really edible, if lots of people consume it or not. Uh, it might have some medicinal value. Um, so if you're interested in that type of mushroom, you should definitely see our previous episode about the medicinal mushrooms, or you can maybe look for some books on this topic. Here is another wonderful mushroom to look for in the woods, or you might have even spotted before. It's very, very distinctive with the shape, the shape of the mushroom. Uh, it looks like an actual ear growing out of the branches or growing on the tree. And the common name is wood ear mushroom. Uh, this is a mushroom that is also part of the jelly fungus family. Um, as you can see, it's jelly-like. It's usually much bigger than the ember jelly roll. And it also has a tiny kind of a reddish fuzzy hair on the top side of the cap, which if you would look very closely, you can see kind of the reddish hue on these mushrooms. This is also the one that will kind of reconstitute and the wood ear is one of the sought after wild mushrooms too. Lots of people will collect it in the woods. They may add it to the stir fry or maybe make something else out of it, just add it to whatever they like to cook. Uh, it's very common to see this mushroom uh, in New England. You can find it around here, even in uh, European countries, and especially in the winter months, as I said. And some of them are really, really funny when you find them. They look like human ears. So those will be fun to find for the kids, I think. This was the wood ear mushroom. Before we end the show, I do want to add this special segment and I want to talk about a little bit about the mushrooms and uh, Christmas folklore. There's many, many countries in Europe and Asia and Northern European countries that have all these folklore tales and lots of these cultures include uh, mushrooms. Uh, you can see lots of mushroom ornaments. If you shop in the stores, you can uh, see these old vintage Christmas cards. 
especially mushroom that you, lots of you probably know by now from our show or maybe from elsewhere. The one that you see in the pictures, all of the red mushrooms in the picture are actually Amanita muscaria. Uh, we do have the same mushroom growing in the United States on the East Coast, it's usually yellow with the white specks, the white warts on the top on the cap. The European version, as you see on these old vintage cards, it's red. So there's all these stories about uh, reindeer consuming uh, mushrooms, the magic mushrooms, Amanita, and then being able to fly. Also Santa is usually, uh, or Saint Nicholas in Europe is usually pictured with some kind of a mushroom. Lots of cultures in Germany, Austria, uh, Slovakia, where I come from, um, they uh, picture or uh, talk about uh, mushroom being uh, like a good luck symbol for the New Year's Eve. So lots of people send out the cards with the mushrooms for the New Year's Eve. And the Christmas has a lots of other places where you can see mushrooms. Uh, I know in Norway, there's a whole culture around the mushrooms being included in the Christmas, maybe some Christmas dishes with the mushrooms. Uh, but especially uh, the Santa wearing the red suit, right? and the uh, flying reindeer. And I know there are some cultures in the northern part of Russia, the Asian part of Russia, really far up north, where shamans would use the mushrooms uh, in the winter months. And uh, this happens around the world too, uh, in other places, obviously. But I think the Christmas is very closely connected with the mushrooms in lots of countries in the world. So I thought this was a fun addition and I wanted to definitely include this. Well, I want to wish you all a Happy New Year, wonderful holidays, great holiday season. And uh, I want to add that we'll see you in next year, in 2024, uh, with the Fungi Finders, Essex Forays. If you have any pictures, any requests for special mushrooms that we should include on the show, or special guests from the Mycological Club, Mycological World, if you want to see another cooking show with the mushrooms, let us know uh, at the ICAM. And I would like to wish you again a Happy New Year 2024. Goodbye.